Hi guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Matt's going to be teaching you how to play Miserloo, which is probably one of the most iconic surf rock guitar riffs that sounds equally as awesome on the ukulele. Now, as you guys saw in the performance, we've arranged this not only as a duet for the ukulele, but also to be played alongside a full band jam track. So a big shout out and thank you to Sage on drums and Steven on U-Bass for lending their talents. So with this tune, let's talk a little bit about both uke parts. Now, the first uke is going to be playing the lead, which is that riff, and then the second uke part is going to be playing the rhythm. Now the rhythm's pretty straightforward, so let's talk about the first uke part, which is that riff. Now that riff uses a technique called tremolo picking, which in a nutshell means you're going to be playing one note on one string at supersonic speeds. And basically that looks and sounds like this. If we take the uke, we're just gonna play the first string open, and it sounds a little bit like this. And I'm using a plectrum. So a pretty cool technique. Now this technique, if it's new to you, then I'd highly encourage you to hit pause on this video and watch this lesson first. So that's going to teach you the mechanics on how to do it. Now there's a couple ways that you can do it. You can use a pick like I just did. You can even use a thumb pick. So if you ever watch Taimane play, that's what she uses to do this technique. Or you can use the nail of your thumb. So I'll drop a couple links in the description box below to the picks that I recommend, so both the thumb pick and the regular pick. And those are great alternatives if you're like me who doesn't typically grow the thumbnail out. Now, as far as this lesson is concerned, it is going to move forward with the assumption that you know how to do the technique. So I'd highly encourage you to watch that mechanics lesson before you jump into this one. Now, as far as this lesson is concerned, you guys are gonna be learning the entire song in this video, so both ukulele parts. But if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's gonna be available here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for Miserloo. Now on that page will also be the on-screen tab viewer. So this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a really great asset for learning this song that much easier. And last but not least, there are the backing tracks that is going to be available for download, and we have two backing tracks. So we have the drums and the U-bass with the rhythm uke, so you can play the lead over it. And then we have the opposite, we have the drums and the U-bass with the lead, so you can play the rhythm on top of that. So if you wanna learn both parts, or if you wanna learn one or the other, you'll be able to rock out and jam with the band at home. And I'll go ahead now and hand it off to Matt to teach you how to play this tune. Today we're going to learn an ukulele duet of the track Miserloo. This is a super fun song to play, but what you want to make sure you can do before you try the song is that you can play what's called a gypsy major scale in A. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to play our open A string, then we're going to play one on the A, then go to four, then five, then seven, then eight, then 11, then 12. Now, as far as the fingering goes, you notice I just used my index finger the whole time as I went up here. It's not that I wanna be able to do this with just one finger each time, it's rather that I wanna get comfortable with any sort of combinations of fingers. So for instance, I could do it all with each one of the four fingers, but then I could also try to expand from that. So I could instead maybe do something like this. where I'm sort of splitting it. So you just wanna get comfortable using different fingers to play that sort of scale. You'll notice that scale is basically the melody of Miserloo. So to start, we're going to learn the uke A part, uh, which is going to be the main melody. And we're going to start with just the melody of the song. So to do this, we're essentially going to play that scale. Start with the open A string. And then we're going to take our index finger, place it here on the first fret of the A string. And what I like to do here is slide that up to four. And then for the last note of bar one, we slide that to five. So I like to use my index on all those notes. 
So bar one in time is something like this, two and three and four and. Now as we go on to bar two, what I'm going to do here is play seven on the A. I'm going to use my ring finger to play this seven. Then we're going to play eight. I'm gonna use my pinky. And then I'm going to slide all the way up to 11 with the pinky and then back down to eight. So measure two in time should sound something like this. Two and three and four and. Now as we go on to measure three and four, because they're the same measure, all that we do is take our ring finger and play the seven on the A and we hold it for four beats for each of those measures. So bars three and four in time sound something like this. Two and three and four and. So here's what bars now one through four sound like in time. It should be something like this. Two and three and four and. Now, as we go on to measure five, this is where the song gets really difficult. It's the exact same part with the left hand, but now we're going to be using what's called the tremolo technique. Now you can do this technique with a guitar pick, you can use fingernails, there's a lot of different ways. I like to use my thumbnail in the same styles as players like Taimani and Jake Shimabukuro and Aldrin Guerrero and all these fantastic ukulele players. They all use this sort of thumb technique. If you'd like to see a video on how to do this technique, I covered it in a live lesson here on Rock Class. You can find that down in the description below. But what essentially it is, is I'm plucking the string in rapid succession. So again, if you've never done this before, please check out that tutorial. But now I'm going to be doing this and doing the exact same part otherwise. So measures five, six, seven, and eight are identical with the left hand, but now have essentially plucking very, very quickly to create that tremolo-like effect. Now the timing of this should essentially be 16th notes. So it should be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And if you're getting that rolling at the beats per minute of the song, which is you know about 160 or so, then you'll, you'll hear how that's just crazy fast with it. But let's go ahead and hear what five, six, seven, and eight sound like now using this tremolo technique. So it should be something like this. Two and three and four and. crazy, right? Now, it's really, really hard to count in and play this in isolation like this. So the thing that I really want to recommend is as you're learning the song and you're trying to get to be able to play it in time, practice it along with some sort of jam track, whether that's the video at the beginning of this tutorial, which by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can always slow down to make sure that you can play at 75% or 50%. Those are the best ways to practice this because the reality with this tremolo technique is you kind of get it locked in to a certain time. It's very difficult to have complete and utter control with it. And you'll notice sometimes when I count in, it starts to lag a little bit at the beginning. It's just because it takes a moment to kind of get into play really hard. It's hard. It's a hard technique, but it sounds really, really good. And it's really, really fun to play. So measures one, two, three, four is just playing the melody without the tremolo. And then five, six, seven, eight are now playing it with the tremolo. Now, as we go on to measure nine here, we go away from the tremolo again, and we're going to play eight on the A string. Well, we were just here with our ring finger on seven in the very end of bar eight. So now we're going to take our pinky and play it eight on the A. And then we're going to play seven. So we just leave our ring finger here, take the pinky off, back up to eight, back down to seven, and then index on five of the A. And that is measure nine. So in time, measure nine should sound something like this. Two and three and four and four. 
Now we go on to measure 10. 10 is going to start with seven on the A, so you add that ring finger back. Five with the index, seven with the ring again, five with the index, and then slide your index down to four, and then slide your index all the way down to one. And that's measure 10, which sounds something like this, two and three and four and As we go on to measure 11, we're going to slide that index finger back up to four on the A. And we're going to play it once, and then we're going to go into the tremolo technique and hold it for the rest of the bar. So measure 11 is something like this. Two and three and four and. <laughs> and then as we go on to measure 12, we're just going to play that four and hold it for the full four beats. So that one's nice and easy. In time, something like this. Two and three and four and. Two and three and four and. So here is measures nine, 10, 11, and 12 in time. Again, when I'm playing it this slow, it's very difficult to do the tremolo technique. It's actually easier to do this technique faster than it is to do it slower because of the twitch-like feel it has, which again, if you haven't done the technique, check out that tutorial down in the link in the description. Um, but it should sound something like this, measures eight, 10, 11, and 12. Two and three and four and. So again, the tremolo is a little off there, isn't it, right? When I do it that slow, it's because it's really tough to do this technique slow. It's much easier to do more quickly. Now, a quick tip, you can actually leave the tremolo out from this whole song. You can, you can play the whole tune without any of the tremolo, just play the notes as they're listed. That is an option. And so at points like this on measure 11, if you find that doing the tremolo on that number four is what's holding you up from playing this tune, just ignore it, get everything else done and then go back and do that tremolo. But now let's go here, ahead and here measures 13 now as we go on. We're going to play seven on the A, use our ring finger here, and then five on the A with the index, seven on the A again with the ring, five on the A with the index, four, slide the index down. So that's something like this in time. Two and three and four and Now as we go on to 14, we had our index here on four. Let's just go ahead and leave it there. And we're going to add a, the middle finger on five of the A. And then we're going to play four on the A with the index, five with the middle, four on the A with the index again. Then slide that down to one. So measure 14 in time is something like this. Two and three and four and. As we go on to measure 15, measure 15, very similar to what we played before on measure 11. It's just now on the open A. We're gonna play the open A, and then we're going to start the tremolo technique for the rest of that measure. So in time, that's something like this. Two and three and four and. And then as we go on to measure 16, it's just the open A for the full four bars. So that in time, pretty self-explanatory, but sounds something like this, two and three and four and. So that you can hear it though, here's measures 13, 14, 15, and 16 all in time. Two and three and four and. So now at this point, it repeats. It's kind of fun because it just goes back to the beginning of the song and you can go back and when you do the beginning of the song, which is normally plucked individually like this, you can instead do the tremolo again. So on the repeat on bars one through four, you can do that tremolo as you go through it. And then it goes all the way through, but let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like the first run through. So this is going to be measures now one through measures 
what is it, 16, bars one through 16, going all the way through should sound something like this, if I can play the whole thing at once. Two and three and four and. So again, you can hear the tremolo is a little rough there. It's because I'm playing it at such a slow speed. It's important to play things slow to develop the correct muscle memory, especially with this left hand. But once you have that, then you can kind of jump ahead and do it faster. So I'm going to play this again, but I'm gonna play it much faster so that you can get a better feel for it with the tremolo going on. So it should sound something like this. Really cool sound, right? And it's okay to change little things about it. So where the tremolos kind of come in, you can play based on how you feel it. It's a very kind of modular song in that way, and it's important to get the, the general feel of the tune as you're practicing and playing it. Because you'll notice I play it a little bit differently all the time, and that's because it's kind of what feels good and what works with this tremolo technique. But anyways, we repeat now, we go all the way through, and then instead of going to measure 15, on the second repeat, we go to measure 17, in which case we're going to play the open A for four beats. So that's pretty self-explanatory in time. Two and three and four and four. And then on 18, I think this is my favorite part in the song to play. We're going to play this nice little chromatic run to finish off the song. And what that is, is it looks something like this. We're gonna play the open A, and then take your pinky and play four on the E. Open on the A, one on the A with the index, two on the A with the middle, three on the A with the ring, four on the A with the pinky. So that looks something like this in time. Two and three and four and. And then as we go to 19, we're going to play 10 on the A. Or excuse me, not 10 on the A, five on the A doubling it for some reason. Five on the A, and we could just slide our pinky up one because we just went zero, one, two, three, four, five. Just kick that pinky up there. And then to finish that measure, what we're going to do is we're gonna bar across five here, and then we're going to go down, up, and then going right into measure 20, we're gonna do a down, and that is the end of the song. And so measure 19 into 20 should sound something like this in time two and three and four and and immediately after doing that last down we're going to mute the strings to get that really cool ending sound so measures 17 18 19 and 20 should sound something like this two and three and four and Pretty cool. Now again, this is a tough song. Playing this tremolo technique takes a lot of practice. And as you can see from me teaching this, I need more practice with this technique to make it sound really good at slower speeds. It's much easier to play fast. I know I sound like a broken record with that, but you kind of lock into the right sound and it's just magical when you get that. So what I recommend is if you're really struggling with the tremolo technique, play the whole song without it. Play all the parts. 
just like this, because it all works. It sounds good, so don't be afraid to play the song, even if you can't do the tremolo technique yet. But now let's go on to the second part, ukulele B's part, which is going to be playing the chords and strumming. So this is actually a really easy part once you have the basses down, because we only have three chords that we're playing, and we're only using one strum pattern the entire time. So when we start this arrangement, measures one and two for ukulele B for the second uke part, the strumming part, they just sit back and wait while ukuleles play this. They don't do anything. But when ukulele A plays this note right here, the seven on the A at the beginning of measure three, that's where we come in with the strum part. And to do this, we're going to learn the strum pattern and we're going to learn a chord progression, which is really simple. We're gonna start by playing an A7, just your index finger here on fret one of the C string, and that's it. To do this, we're going to play this strum pattern, which looks like this. It goes down, and then you miss coming up, because remember, what goes down must come up. You can't do two downstrokes in a row. I'm just not hitting the str strings as I come up. And then I'm going to do a chunk. Now, if you need help with chunks, if you need a chunkier chunk, there are links down in the description below that give you different tutorials on how to do this technique really well. But then after we do that chunk, we're gonna come up, and then we're gonna miss going down, so don't touch the strings. Then we're gonna come up, and then chunk, and then up. And that's the whole strum pattern used throughout the entire song until the very, very end. So here's what it sounds like really slow. I'm gonna say the motions as I'm doing it. And then I'm going to gradually speed up so that you can start to get a feel for the groove. I'm just gonna hold this A7 chord. So it's something like this. Two and three and four four and down miss chunk up miss up chunk up down miss chunk up miss up chunk up down miss chunk up miss up chunk up getting a little faster eventually you get that groove for this and it just sounds so good it's basically our standard island or calypso. There's all sorts of names for it. The down, down, up, up, down, up. Only the down on beat two and beat four have been replaced with chunks. So instead of down, down, up, up, down, up, it's down, chunk, up, up, chunk, up. Same rhythm though. And here's what's cool is measures uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are all the same. They're all exactly the same. And we're just going to play this drum pattern with this chord. So it sounds something like this in time. Two and three and four and. But now when we get to measure nine, we're going to play the exact same strum pattern. Nothing changes with our strumming hand, but we're going to play a G minor chord. Really simple chord, take your middle finger, place it on the second fret of the C string, ring finger here on the third fret of the E, and index here on the first fret of the A. We're going to go down, chunk up, up, chunk up, and we're going to do it twice. So measures nine and 10 are both on the G minor. Sounds something like this, down, chunk up. As we go on now into measure 11, we go back to the A7. We're going to do this twice. So that's 11 and 12. Then we go into measure 13, go back to the G minor, two times on this. And then we go on to 15, go back to the A7, two times on this now. And that's the whole first part. At this point, it repeats back to the beginning. And when we play it back at the beginning, we rest again. Remember the very beginning of the song, ukulele B, doesn't play. So on the second repeat, I like to not do that again so that we can make it a solo part. But then it goes back through and plays the exact same part all over again, which is pretty great because it's not much to learn to be able to play this. So here's what this strummed part sounds like. And I'm going to count in, I'm going to play it with the repeat so that you can hear it. And then once we get to measure 17, where it's new stuff, I'm going to stop so we can talk it through. So here we go, starting at the top, going all the way through with the repeat, the strum part should sound something like this. Two and three and four and, we rest.
Now it goes back to the beginning. Now this is where it's different, right? When we get through that second repeat, instead of going on to measure 15 for that A7, we go on to measure 17, and guess what? It's still an A7, it's still the same stuff. So measure 17 is that same pattern, and measure 18 is the same pattern too. So all that's the same, until we get now to measure 19, or 18 rather. Let me give you the right number here. Until we get to measure 19. <laughs> so 17 and 18 are exactly the same with that A7. But then on 19, where the uke 1 went to all the 5, we are going to go to a D minor chord. To play this, just take your middle finger, place it on the 2nd fret of the C string, ring finger on the 2nd fret of the C string. Said the middle finger on the C, it's actually on the G. 2 on the G with the middle finger, 2 on the C with the ring finger, index here on 1 of the E string. We're going to play a down strum on that chord, and that's going to be the beginning of 19. And then through the end here, it's going to go down, up, down. And that's going to be the end of measure 19 for four and, and then the beginning of measure 20, we're going to do a down strum on this chord, and then we're going to mute it. To do that, you just take your fingers and touch the strings and kind of move them up the neck, just like that. So measure 19 and 20 should sound something like this. Two and three and four and two and three and four. And that is the end of the tune. Super fun song to play, really hard. I mean, I'm struggling teaching this, trying to get these things in time at these slow speeds because the truth of it is, is I tried to practice it at a speed where I could still feel it, where I was getting that tremolo technique. I got this technique down pretty well before I started this tune. And so I really started it about this speed. When I was learning it. Doing it at this sort of s s speed is really hard. Can't even say it and do it at the same time. So if you're struggling with it, know that you're not alone and it's a tough song, but you will get it. When you get that sense locked in, it's super fun to play and it's super iconic to the ukulele tone of today. So hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you guys next time for the next lesson here on Rock Class 101. Thanks so much. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I gotta say that playing this with that really cool Eastern sounding riff is just super duper fun, especially when you add on the tremolo picking technique. So a lot of fun in this tune. Also, I wanna say that if you wanna jump more into learning about how scales are formed and how you can alter them, then check out our music theory course. It goes super in depth into all of that stuff. So I do wanna leave you with a friendly reminder. If you wanna get the tabs for this song to print off and keep for your records, you can do so by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for Miserloo. Now also on that page was the on-screen tab here, so that really cool interactive tab player where you can hit play, you can watch that tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz, plus the backing tracks. So if you've learned both parts or if you learned only one of them, you can still download the backing track and jam out and rock out at home with the band. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.